everybody welcome back to my channel today's video I wanted to go back to the old good and gritty good stuff so I thought that today I would show you guys just like a full talk through step by step of my entire base routine because as you guys know skin is kind of the thing that I like to always put the focus on I love to have a bronzed glowing kind of perfected base and you know maybe I'll play up the eyes or a bold lip but for the most part I put all of my focus on the skin so I thought that today I would actually sit and talk through each and every step why I do what I do show you guys some of my favorite tips and tricks and obviously some of my favorite products which will probably be repetitive for a lot of you guys but I did just want to give you this full in-depth perfect skin makeup routine. So I'm starting with a bare face. I am actually going to go in first with my face cream today. I'm using the Fresh Rose face cream. This one is beautiful. It's nice and light for every day and I just take this. I have a freshly cleansed palette on my face. This is such a lovely, delicious, smelling, hydrating face cream and I definitely like my skin to be very, very moisturized as you guys are probably aware of if you've been following my channel for a long time. But after I apply my face cream, when I'm going to use a primer or a priming product, primers don't really work for me for some reason. Whenever I've tried to find like a pore filling primer, um, or something to smooth out my skin. I have really, really big pores, especially right here. I just realized I can zoom you guys in. Hello. Actually, I'm going to put lip balm on as well. Bite agave lip mask. My lips are hella chapped, so make sure to moisturize all orifices. <laughs> I've got some big pores right around here on my nose area, and they typically show up when I put foundations on, but anytime I've tried to use a smoothing primer, and I have tried so many primers over the years, and being on YouTube, I have been given so many primers to try, and there hasn't, like there's been some primers that I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, that worked, that filled in my pores, and made it look more smooth, but then it's just never been a product I've stuck with, and a lot of them just kind of ball off of my skin when I go to apply my foundation afterwards, so I pretty much just gave up on smoothing primers and just accepted the fate of my pores but in terms of primer the only thing that I like to do is add a product that is going to more intensely moisturize my face before applying foundation because for me I have really really dry skin and I get really bad tightness around my mouth and when I put foundation products on top of that throughout the day it just gets more and more tight more and more dry and itchy so I like to put on as many layers of moisturizing products as possible which is why I have been so religiously using the Smashbox primerizer since I discovered it last summer since then I have pretty much not put any other priming product on my face this is so amazing it's like a second layer of moisture but more intense that being said I wouldn't just use this maybe if you didn't have as dry skin as someone like myself you could just use that in place of a moisturizer because it does say primer and moisturizer in one but I definitely do like to layer this on top of my moisturizer just because that's what I found works best for my skin but this is a second layer so so intensely moisturizing I put a couple pumps of this on and I pretty much just drench my face in this and it feels so good and soothing and cooling and in terms of priming abilities I don't notice any kind of like pore filling or smoothing of the skin but just because it is giving your skin that more intense plump and moisturized finish and feeling i find that just in general the foundation products go on top of that much better anyway because you do have such a nice soothed juicy base so smashbox primerizer has been my go-to for such a long time i think that's my third or fourth bottle it's great i use it on the daily no matter what I'm doing and it just makes my skin feel so good. So next up on the docket is a glowing product. I love my glow so so much and I was actually my friend Armine, a sweet friend who also does my hair if you don't know her she's at hair by Armine on Instagram she's actually over at my house for dinner last night and I was going through and giving her some glowy base products and she was like well I have super oily skin why do I want my entire face to have this glowing product and I kind of just I didn't really know how to answer her I guess it's just a personal preference because even for myself if I'm using a matte foundation or if I know I'm gonna be particularly sweaty that day like going out in the heat I get really Really, really sweaty and oily like on my t-zone and nose area I know that it might seem off-putting to want to put those intense moisturizing and glowing products but even if I have a matte foundation and I'm looking for a matte foundation on that particular day sometimes it's nice when you're going to an event or you're having a late night you just want something to last and sit on your face and not wipe off and be all messy and glowy and whatever Anyway, regardless of what I'm doing, I still want that like lit from within healthy glow. It just puts the most beautiful finish. Like sometimes you see a person and they just have a glow about them. And maybe they just had sex. Maybe they're pregnant. 
or maybe it's a glowy base that they put under their foundation. Regardless, it's just such a beautiful look and it's very different in look to oiliness and purposeful placement of highlighter. So regardless of what I'm doing, what the finish is, what you're into, I love to do a glow and you guys, oh, I'm so obsessed with this. I can't even begin to express. It is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion. I have the shade 902 Light Glow. And when Arms was over at my house last night, I opened the drawer and I was like, I was looking at all of my kind of glow giving products and I thought this has completely satisfied my entire need for a glow giving product. Like I haven't since trying this, I have not reached for any other glow giving products like the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops, the Fresh Luminizer, the Marc Jacobs Coconut Gel Highlighter. I just, the Lumi Lotion is so good and I have been so obsessed with it. And it does just give that beautiful lit from within finish on the skin. So I just take a couple of squeezes of this and just put it on the face. And this one also has a little bit of bronze added to it as well. So it just gives an all over warm glow to the skin. And you can see it just, it adds that nice sheen. It's nothing like crazy shiny or overly highlighted. It doesn't make your skin look oily. It just gives it that beautiful, healthy glow. How many times can I say glow in five seconds? So that is the glowy base. If you're going to the beach and you don't want to have anything else on your skin, like you can totally just stop here. It just gives a little something, something all over the skin and it just makes your skin look very healthy and lovely. And now that I've applied all of those things, I'm ready to go into the base. Now when it comes to foundation, you're going to have different products that you want to use for different days, different occasions. If your skin is breaking out, kind of whatever your need is, you're probably going to have multiple products to use for multiple different occasions and reasons. So for example, back when I had my horrible cystic acne, like prior to my Accutane treatment, I used to just want that full coverage because I just didn't want to look at those giant horrific breakouts that were all over my face. I just wanted them covered. I wanted them out of sight, out of mind. I didn't want to have to think about them. And now that my skin has been better and I get the occasional like hormonal breakout. I do prefer to have that lighter base and then go in after I've applied my foundation and kind of correct and conceal where I need it and not everywhere. Now this is something I also find interesting. It's such a popular thing on YouTube in the beauty world to post a no foundation makeup routine, which I find so odd because I guess it's everyone has their own reasons for doing what they do and they like different finishes and whatnot. But for myself, I know you can't really see it on the camera. It, pretty, it blurs it out pretty well, but I've got um, red patches that always exist on my cheeks and they kind of get worse throughout the day and then I also have these blue veins that are all across my cheeks so for me having a product to even out my skin tone has always been something that I prefer over concealer like it's a rare day that I would want to go in with no foundation and just conceal a spot because I do like to have that even just nice fresh complexion and then deal with a spot after that. But I, I love foundation. I don't know why it seems to be this like bad thing or skin clogging, pore blocking thing. I, I love the look of foundation. I think that if you're using a light, beautiful, fresh covering foundation, it's just gonna make your skin look very healthy and it, it doesn't have to have intense full coverage. You can use something light. So, you know, one of my favorites, as you guys know, is the Glossier Skin Tint because this one doesn't really have any intense coverage, but it does just give that nice tinted wash over the skin. It kind of evens out the skin tone a little bit and just makes your skin look more fresh and healthy. And another one is the MAC Face and Body. This one has a little bit more, well, quite a bit more coverage actually than the Glossier Skin Tint. And what I like about both of these products is that once it's on your face, it, it doesn't budge. Like these ones set really nicely. You don't have to worry about it moving and rolling around your skin throughout the day. And it still makes your skin look like your skin. You don't have you don't really detect any product or coverage on your face when you're out in natural daylight. And that's why I love them so much. If I want a little bit more coverage, the Cosmetic CC Cream is something I'll go towards. Lately, I've been using the Tarte BB Cream and I'll kind of mix in the Glossier Skin Tint just to dilute it a little bit. And I think that that's also a really fun thing that you can do personally, and that's to make your own foundation concoction. So for example, the MAC Face and Body, I love it on its own, but it does set pretty quickly. Like as you'll, you'll feel, like as you rub it in your hands, you'll You'll feel it kind of setting into your skin and setting in place and I find that adding a little bit of the Glossier Skin Tint just gives me a little bit more play time as I am applying it onto my skin. And I've just kind of gotten used to adding the skin tint to everything which is why I continue to do that. But it's definitely not necessary. You play with what you want. If you wanted to use like for example on days when I want more coverage I might be having a particularly bad breakout or my redness might be a little bit more intense then that's when I like to go in with my stick foundations. And this little mixture I've been using kind of when I go to events and whatnot on those days when I want to make sure that my coverage and you know 
perfected bases on fleeky fleek and the hourglass vanish stick foundation mixed with a little bit of the nars matte foundation stick two very different finishes but when they are blended out on the skin with the brush it's still giving you that coverage but it's undetectable on the skin you wouldn't look up close on my skin and be like wow that's a really thick layer of foundation let me scratch that off these are really beautiful blended out an old favorite of mine used to be the Giorgio armani power fabric foundation i haven't used this in so long i actually pulled it out and was like should i use it today but i figured it would be more true to you guys to show you the exact process that I've been using lately but the power fabric is another one that I is a go-to for me when I you know going to events and making sure I had that perfected base but it doesn't look too crazy it doesn't look too thick on the skin so and even with this I would mix in a lighter coverage foundation to sheer it out or add like a glow drop like the cover effects custom cover drops and you kind of make your own concoction you could use a matte foundation but you want a little bit of glow as well and you can mix the two together. It's totally trial and error and finding out what works best for your skin and that's why we're here on YouTube. And, and you know, for those of you who watch me and you have oily skin, you might not use the products that I'm using, but for those of you with dry skin, might use exactly what I'm using. You just have to kind of test it out and play with products that work for you. So. For all intents and purposes of this day, I am going to use my MAC Face and Body and I'm gonna mix in the Glossier Skin Tint because this does just give me that skin-like base that I know and love on my face. So I'm gonna take some of the MAC Face and Body, I just put this on my hands, take a little bit of the Glossier Skin Tint and I just put a couple drops in there as well. Rub it between my hands and I apply that onto my skin. Is this too dark for my face right now? Yes. Is my body darker than my neck and face right now? Yes. I've got a very uneven tan going on right now, but I promise you, it does match the rest of my limbs. So I am applying this with my fingers. I just press it into my skin. I put the main focus of the product in the center of the face, and I kind of just blend outward. I blend down my cheeks. I like to focus quite a bit of the product onto my cheeks, as I mentioned before, because I do have those veins and redness and whatnot around there. And you can go in and add more as you go. The MAC Face and Body is really, um, layerable it's nice it doesn't like flake off or pill off as you add more product and i always make sure to push it right into my hairline as well it might muck up my hair if i've got an updo going on but that's fine push it into the ears to make sure that it's all even and matching and also blend it down the neck if you've got a permanent white neck because of your double chin like i do <laughs> and that is the layer of the mac face and body and the glossier skin tint applied as you can see it's just evened out my skin tone giving me an all over fresh look looking complexion, but you can still see imperfections. If I had a breakout, you would still see the breakout and that's where you go in and conceal. But before we go on to concealer, I wanted to talk about applying with my hands because I'm always surprised at how many people actually comment on the fact that I apply my foundation or most of my foundations with my hands. And looking back at my old videos, like I was such an advocate of the Beauty Blender. I used the Beauty Blender religiously. It was my go-to way to apply my foundation. And then the more I kind of did YouTube, the more products I tried, the more comfortable I became with my skin. Uh, I just like the feeling of applying it with my hands. I feel like I'm really blending it and melting it into my skin. I'm not using like a foreign object, not that that's a bad thing, but I also just watched a ton of makeup artists YouTube videos and I'd say a majority of the time when you see makeup artists in action, they are using their fingers because it melts the product. It makes it blend into the skin a lot better and I just I just typically prefer the finish when I apply it with my hands. Now that being said, when I use something like a stick foundation, applying it with my hands doesn't really work and that's when I like to use my foundation brush. This is the MAC 170 foundation brush and I love this one because it's nice and dense but it's still soft to the touch. Like there's a lot of foundation brushes that I've seen and tried in the world that are very, very stiff. And when you go to blend the product out, it kind of just pushes it away. You end up getting really streaky foundations. So finding a foundation brush that works for you is fantastic when you find the one that works best. And oftentimes if I've applied the foundation with my hands, I'll kind of go in and just go around the outlining bits of my face and just make sure that it's all blended in. And I also love to use this with my concealer, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But that's pretty much it. I still use a beauty blender every once in a while, but most of the time I like to apply the products with my fingers or with my MAC 
170 foundation brush. So now for concealer, you guys know that I have some pretty strong favorites of concealer that I use on repeat and there have been some old favorites that have kind of, you know, led the nest, but uh, yeah. Basically my philosophy with concealer is less is more. If you've got a breakout, if you've got a zit, you can cover it up, but you know, I feel like most people in the YouTube and blogging space are going away from that piling on a billion pounds of concealer. You know, everyone used to take the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, do the giant triangles under the eyes and use the beauty blender to blend it out. And that's fine if you're doing like Instagram makeup, maybe you want more intense coverage because you're doing a photo shoot and you're getting a lot of flashback, whatever. In your daily life, I truly believe that just less is more on your skin. So a couple of the products that I love, I'm gonna use this one right now. This is the Tarte Under Eye Corrector. I have the shade Light Medium. I haven't used this in so long. It's been sitting in my drawer and I kind of just always forget to use it, but I'll just take a little bit of this with my ring fingers and I apply this right onto my bags. And this is my favorite product that I have used for underneath the bags because it is that peachy tone that's gonna color correct the intense blue if you have big bags on your eyes if you just didn't get enough sleep that night putting a little bit of this on top of that bag and blending it out with your finger just the smallest amount this is a pretty thick product but that's really gonna help to color correct and counteract those dark circles so that's something I like to do and I'm doing that today because I did not get enough sleep last night. And as you can see, that just totally brightens up the under eye area. In terms of concealers, the two I've been loving lately have been the RMS Uncover Up Concealer. This is a very nice, light, very moisturizing concealer, and I love the effect of this underneath the eyes because I don't get any of that dry flakiness under the eyes. It doesn't settle into the fine lines. It's really nice for an everyday light concealer. That's not gonna do too much intense covering, but on those days when I do want a very perfected base, I have maybe a larger breakout and I need something that's going to fully pack a punch and cover up what I need to be covered up. The NARS Soft Matte Concealer has been my go-to. I have the shade Custard in this. This is absolutely beautiful. It is a matte finish, but I find that it's not. I think the problem with the word matte in the past has been that oftentimes matte is associated with oiliness and drying out the skin, but that is not the case for this. It has a very natural matte finish, but it's not going to dry out your skin. So even though I have intensely dry skin, I never find that this flakes or settles into my fine lines or anything. It just gives me a really perfected, beautiful base on the skin. And this is what I use when I go to events and I don't wanna have any shine. I just wanna make sure that I have a perfected base and that it's also gonna last a really long time. So I actually do have an event that I'm going to tonight. So I'm gonna skip the RMS Uncover Up Concealer just for today. You guys have seen it in action a lot lately and I am just gonna use my Soft Matte Complete Concealer instead. And how I like to apply this is taking a bit on my fingers and I kind of press it into the area where I want it to be, so right here. I've got these like weird little bumps that kind of never go away on this portion of my face. There's always a little bit more redness there and it often gets more intense and deep as the day goes on. You know, if I'm walking around and getting all hot and bothered with life, <laughs> it does just tend to get a little bit more red. So I just apply it with my finger down the bridge of my nose. I also have the red veins that kind of stick out of my nose once upon a time. Oh my god, I wonder if you guys would remember the vlog. It was in Calgary. I actually got those veins blasted off with an IPL treatment, but they do come back. So those red veins have come back. A little bit on my forehead where I have a bit more redness. And then I also always go on my chin because that is a place that is endlessly red for me. And I apply it with my finger. And this is where I go in with my MAC 170 brush. And I will use that to just blend out those edges. It's a very, very soft brush. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit more. So as you can see, I've just applied the concealer and I just like to take my MAC brush and just soften up those edges and make sure that it's all blended in with my skin. And the Soft Matte Concealer is just beautiful. It blends into your skin so perfectly. You never have any of those crazy, harsh, coverage line like if you have a light base on and then you apply a high coverage concealer in one spot sometimes you can really see a difference on your skin but i find that this one just melts so beautifully with the rest of the products on your skin and just i'm gonna say skin five million times but it does just have a very nice skin like finish i've already been filming for 32 minutes this is going to be a very long video but i hope that it's been informative thus far so now that the concealer and the foundation is done i'm going to go ahead and talk about powder the powder that i have been loving and exclusively using lately has been the hourglass translucent 
Veil powder. I also love the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder, the Glossier Wowder. I've tried a lot of powders in the past. I've gone through a lot of powders and there's only a few that have really worked beautifully for my dry skin in the sense that it's setting in the makeup. It's gonna set that concealer that we've just applied, make sure that I'm not gonna get too oily and shiny, but that it's not drying out the skin. It's not taking away from that beautiful glow that we've worked so hard to create on the base and that's kind of what I look for in a powder and the Hourglass Veil Translucent powder has definitely been doing that for me so I'm just taking my Bobbi Brown sheer powder brush that, that's a lot that was that was wasteful I mean I take the powder and I just focus it mainly on my nose because again that's where I get the most shiny but also up in the center of my forehead and also on my chin that's where I typically get shiny I touch my chin a lot I try to remind myself to not touch my face so much but I'm really bad it's a bad bad habit to have and I also take just the tiniest amount underneath the eyes where we applied that concealer and just make sure that it's not gonna budge. And that's pretty much all I do with powder. I'm not big into powder. Typically on a daily basis, I don't powder too much. I do like to keep that very glowy base, but because I am going to an event tonight and I wanna make sure that I'm preventing that shine, I will apply the powder. So now on to contour. If you guys have been following me for a long time, you know how I feel about contour. I've got quite a large noggin and it's pretty round and I like to contour the absolute ish out of it. My thoughts on contouring is we've just taken our face and any natural coloring and shadows in it. We have just taken product and made it all one shade. And so you wanna just add dimension back into that. And if you do have a larger face and more round face like myself and you're into the very chiseled smiley cheekbones, it's just something that you wanna enhance. You kind of do what makes you feel beautiful. And for myself, that's a giant slice in my cheek. <laughs> my favorite contouring product forever and always is the Kevin Aquan Contour Powder which I just shattered yesterday and I'm pretty friggin' devastated about it. You lasted me a long time, my friend. Uh, the reason why I love this contour powder, I've said it before and I will say it again. It's an individual product. You get one shade, you choose your shade. I have the shade medium. It's about 50 bucks. You don't quote me on that. I can't remember the exact price right now, but, but I will use this until it's death and it will usually take me about two years to do so. And that's me using this almost every single day. And I'm not light-handed with it either. This is the most long-lasting, wonderful, worth it, more high-end product that I could suggest to you. And the reason why I like buying this one is because it's sold individually, it's sold separately. You don't have to buy a palette with like six or eight different shades, half of them being shades that you're never gonna use. So that's why I use this one so much because I think it's just worth your dollars. And with contouring products, they're gonna be a little bit more gray in tone, typically depending on your skin tone shade. So this is, for example, my matte bronzer. It's a little bit warmer. The Kevin Aquan one is going to be that dark gray shadow and that's because it's trying to mimic a natural shade of a shadow that will exist on your face. So um, I'm just gonna take the powder so I stop, just so I don't fling all of these broken bits everywhere. I use this with my MAC 188 brush. This is a duo fiber brush. It is meant technically for cream products. That's why it has the duo fibers. That's the purpose for it. Um, but I find that with the flat surface area, it just gives it a more natural look. So even though I'm applying a dark ass shadow on my cheek, it doesn't look too intense because I'm not drawing a stripe. It's more diffused with this larger surface area and this is a very soft brush. And it just works really well with it. I like it a lot. So what I do with the contour, you make a little squishy kissy face and you see that there's a natural line underneath your cheek and everyone might do this differently I'm just showing you guys what I do personally and how I you know think this through there's kind of like an invisible line from your mouth to the top of your ear and that's kind of the direction that you want to go in and if you're thinking about this as a line you want to blend on top of the line so what I like to do is take my most flat edge of this brush and you're gonna draw that imaginary line. And instead of, I see a lot of people actually blend that line down and it just makes your face look dirty. It kind of just makes it look like you just rubbed a bunch of dirt down there. So I like to blend upwards into the hairline. So I'll just fluff that around, blend it into my hairline and making sure that I'm going up from the line that we just created. And I just use the tiniest little dip of product, but you can see it's creating that beautiful gray line there. And, and it's just a little bit more chiseled. It's a little bit more cut than the other side. So um, I am gonna go in and add a little bit more because I'm wild like that. And you can just deepen up that area as you go, however you want, however chiseled and cut you want your cheek to be. Following that line, and blending kind of in circular 
motions up toward the hairline. And I also love to take this on my jawline, just right here. I'm not going above my jawline and I'm not going down towards my neck. I'm just going right where the natural shadow already sits. Excuse you. Hello, sorry about that. Where were we? I do believe we were talking about double chin be goning. <laughs> Basically, I just always like to put some contour here to deepen up that shadow under my jaw and make it look like I have a jaw chiseled and cut from the gods. That's the contour. That's basically all I've been doing lately for that. And now I'm going to continue the giant array of products that I put on my cheeks with a matte bronzer. This one here is the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer. It was their limited edition summer collection. I am sorry about that, but there are so many beautiful matte bronzers that exist in the world. Bobbi Brown Golden Light, Benefit Hula, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil, so many lovely matte bronzers. This is just the one I'm using now. I'm taking my Burberry blush brush. There are so many brushes like this that exist in the world. You do not have to do the Burberry one. So basically we've drawn lines with the contouring product and now I'm going to warm up the face with a matte bronzer. So I'm gonna go over top of where I applied that contour, taking it further up that line, blending it into the skin. And then I also like to take the matte bronzer and go along my temples. And this is just gonna warm up the perimeter of the skin, making it look like you have a real natural fresh tan. And the reason why I like to go so much on my forehead is because this is where the sun naturally hits. This is where I naturally get a lot of my freckling. And so that's where I would naturally get a tan. So I'm taking that warm bronzer and I am layering it up with the contour and it's just making more dimension. It's using layers, more friggin' brush hairs. Wow, that's annoying. <laughs> and just giving yourself a natural summer warmth. And then I always like to take the matte bronzer and I go across my nose. I kind of blend it onto my cheeks because again, the nose is what would see the sun. That's where I get my freckles and a natural tan. So I just rub that matte bronzer across my nose. And then I also go along my neck a little bit and make sure to blend some of that warmth down there. So then as a final step in the bronzing routine, now that I've got this natural matte warmth and contoured looking skin, I wanna add a sun-kissed glow. So that's when I go in with my shimmery bronzer. The one I'm using lately is the Becca Sunrise Waves. This is absolutely stunning. It is such a beautiful, beautiful shimmery glowing bronzer. It actually has their highlighting strips in here built in with the bronzer. Another one I love is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Shimmery Bronzer. That one's absolutely stunning. The NARS Laguna Bronzer. I just love to go in with a matte and then go on top with a shimmer to add dimension. So I take my e.l.f. stipple brush and I lightly apply that across the tops of my cheeks. I'll go on top of my brow bone, just really lightly dusting this across the whole face and it does just add such a gorgeous finish on the skin. It looks like I've been in Cabo again but I haven't been. And that's it. It's a nice, natural, bronzed look on the skin. You can obviously use a lighter hand if you don't like quite an intense cheek like this, but again, I got a big face. I like to chisel it out a lot. Now for the highlighter. I am going to bathe and highlight right now because again, I'm going to an event tonight and that's where I'm gonna use the big boy, the most intense highlighter that I own. This is the Becca Opal. I have used this bad boy to death. It's lovely, it's my favorite. I love the NARS Faute de France. Those are kind of the two powder highlights that I've been going in between lately. I've been using a lot of cream highlighters like the Hourglass Champagne Flash and the RMS Magic Luminizer. I've been really into that lighter highlighting look using the fingers, but I wanted to go more intense today. So I'm gonna take the Becca Opal using my Sigma F35 brush. Oh, I just have these brush hairs everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. If you're like, wow, what an intense beard. Just know, I do have a beard. But in this case, it's the brush hairs. Don't judge me. So with this, as you can see from the glowing products that we've already added, we already do have a natural highlight going. It's not natural. It's not natural. You know what I mean, though. It's already there. So basically, where the sun hits this area, on top of the contour and bronzer that we've applied, that's where we wanna go in with the highlight. So I like to start right on the like outer corner area of my eye and I blend it down the top of the cheekbone and up into the brow because that's where, because that's where it already naturally is sitting and I'm just going to intensify that using the Becca Opal and just making it stand out a lot more. So just taking that on the other side as well I watched Estee's video where Katie Jane Hughes did her makeup and she was just going in so hard with the highlighter, but it looked so 
beautiful and she was basically just like trust the process it'll look amazing and I was like wow it did her cheekbones were highlighted to the heavens and so I've kind of been doing that lately I've just been adding on layers and layers and just really blending in the highlighter all over this area naturally I go on my cupid's bow which I'll just go down the bridge of my nose just very very lightly I don't like to apply too much excess product I'm currently brain farting but someone recently applied it onto the tops of the brows here as well was it Pixie Woo? I don't remember. Kind of give myself some devil horns and that's gonna be it for the highlighter. Now on occasion, I will reach for an orange blush, a cool toned pink blush, whatever color blush I'm feeling, but for the most part, I go for a nude and I love the Hourglass Brilliant Nude Blush. This is my favorite. It's just a beautiful, glowing, natural blush and I take that, I make this weird little face and I apply it right onto the apples of the cheeks and I blend outward towards the outer bits of my face. And you can see it just adds just a nice natural little pink flush. And if you guys watched my makeup brush video, you'll know that I love the Bobbi Brown blush brush. It's my favorite. And I'm basically just coating that area with the blush and it's just so natural and glowy and lovely. And just as a personal process, I like to do my highlight and then the blush because in my head the blush is kind of just a finishing little cherry on top. Um, I'm doing all these lines with the contour. I'm making a line with the contour, I'm making a line with the bronzer, I'm making a line with the highlighter, and then the blush is more circular and I kind of just plop that right in the middle at the end to kind of be a finishing topper a finishing cherry on the top for the face products. And I find it just ties everything together. And then this, my friends, is the finished base. This is my final perfect skin makeup tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoyed this rather long and intense walk through and talk through of my entire process on how I like to perfect or at least try to perfect as I am able the uh, skin on my face. And this is the end result. It's just very bronzed, very, very glowy. That's the look I love to go for. And even if I am going for a more matte finish on the skin, I do really like to amp up that bronze and glow in those particular areas. This is the finished look. I really do hope that this was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments down below any you know process that you guys do. What steps do you guys do in creating your perfect skin base? What are some of your favorite products? Let me know. Are there any products that you want me to try and review here on my channel for you guys? I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much as always for watching and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!